happening was happening was happening people happy sunday happy father's day and welcome 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 to moment with most sketty i'm your hostesses with the mostesses your mental and spiritual wellness guide your auntie sister mother cousin best friend who always coming with the realness you already know most sketty herself welcome Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, you already know where we at. We at we at the Tone Deaf Network in the Tone Deaf Studio, where all the greatest Milwaukee podcasts come through. You know, especially since I'm part of the family, so you know the greatest, only only the best with the best and for the best <laughs> come through this space. I got Tony here smiling and giggling because 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 he know he know he he know he the boss. He know he the champion. He threw together that intro. Look, if you saw. Just if you didn't see the way that I come on, you got to go back to the top of the show and just watch the first like 15 seconds because I'm completely obsessed with the way that intro went. Tone Def, Tone put it together. Um, all the photos that were a part of that, including the one that I got, wait, which way I go? The one that I got right here were taken by um, Vogue Dreams Production, which is led up by Miss Tonda Thompson, who is an entrepreneur extraordinaire, you know. I got to support my Milwaukee locals and all of the things that we have going on here in the city because we have some extremely fantastic talent here in the city um, and it deserves to be patronized. It deserves to be recognized and it deserves to be highlighted. Um, so here we are. I'm, I'm, your, I'm, I'm your girl behind the mic, <laughs> most sketty, and we are doing a part two to our um, healing and growth unit i think this one i'm not really even sure how many how many sessions along this is gonna go but i definitely wanted to bring you back a part two um last week we talked a lot about uh the difference between healing and growth and why it's important for you to heal in order for you to grow and now that healing um is really important for not just yourself but your generations that are coming behind you in the community that is currently around you so this week we're gonna get a little bit more into um what it what it looks like what it means to heal um and how you know that you have healed but before we jump all the way into that before we jump all the way into the subject for the day um we're gonna do a couple church announcements because you know how i kick it off uh i got i got y'all here live on facebook hello to my family hello to my mother my biggest fan i already knew she was gonna be on at the top i appreciate you for being able to adjust your schedules because usually i come to you at 3 30 but with today being father's day and me being respectful of the father Fathers in the world, including Tone himself, I wanted to make sure that I was a little more accommodating to his schedule. Y'all gonna be here, whether live or in the playback. Um, so I appreciate y'all being able to be here with me. I got my Facebook family, I got my YouTube family, I got my TikTok family. I see y'all. I'm not gonna forget about y'all. Um, so before we get into the lesson for today, we're gonna go through a little, uh, just some brief church announcements. Like I said, first and foremost, Happy Father's Day. Okay, if you're a father out there, kudos to you. Kudos to you for loving your kids. Kudos to you for loving your, your bonus kids slash step kids. Kudos to you for loving other people's kids. Um, and uh, if you're an uncle out there and you love some kids the way that a father will love them kids, kudos to you. We're celebrating manhood. We're celebrating masculinity and the nurturing and loving and parenthood that goes on with that. A lot of times Mother's Day gets all of the shine and recognition because, you know, we pop the babies out. So that's a big deal. <laughs> But without the fathers there to support us through that mission, without the fathers there to help hold the household together, without the fathers there to, you know, help reinforce whatever we got going on, you know, we are, we, 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 we are missing another side to the beauty of parenthood. So kudos to all the men who are in their children's lives, all the men who desire to be in their children's lives, who are struggling through that. Keep your heads up, brother. Keep pushing forward and always, you know, do whatever you can to show your love and your appreciation to your kids and all the kids who are around you. Because like I said, all kids are our kids. Um, church announcement number two, I'm going to keep this one kind of brief. If you know, um, the Churches of Christ are going to the Midwest Youth Conference. We are taking off at... 
I'm ready, you ready. We're taking our young people to Bowling Springs, Ohio. Hold on, where the clap at? What? <laughs> We're taking the kids to Ohio this year. We're looking to have a fantastic time. I'm excited for us to get on that coach bus, uh, the Central Church of Christ, the Brentwood Church of Christ, the Hampton Church of Christ, all churches here in the city of Milwaukee are going to get together, ride on the bus, have a good time, um, and just pour into our children, not just, um, well, absolutely, because this is a church event, we're going to be pouring into them a lot of good, good God guidance, a lot of Jesus, and we are also going to make sure that we highlight mental health throughout the uh, course of the conference because we believe in a well-rounded, well-rounded mindset. All right, because sometimes you need Jesus and a therapist. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, I don't want to hold you too long. I just want to keep you for a moment with me. So we're going to hop right on into it and get to it. Healing and growth part two. Let me take a good sip of my water and we'll get into it. <laughs> So last week we talked we talked deeply about the importance of healing and why you should heal and how you should heal yourself. Um, and well, we did not talk about how you should heal yourself. Today we're going to get into the steps and how you would go about healing yourself because I, I feel like people talk a lot about you need to heal, you need to heal, you need to you do the work, you need to go to therapy, you need to uh, be, be be working on your healing in the off time, you need to make sure that if you are a healer, you're healing. Um, but I don't know if we talk enough about like what does it actually mean to heal? Like what are some steps in healing and how do we even know whether or not we have really healed from something? Because a lot of times uh, we think we've healed and we haven't. We've just allowed a little bit of time to uh, pass. And somebody recently brought up to me that time actually doesn't heal all wounds. Time doesn't do anything but allow time to pass. It is the things that occur over the course of time that is act that actually heals you. And so we want to talk about, I'm going to give y'all a, a couple of things that y'all can do, a couple of steps that you can take in order to make sure that you are on your healing journey. Before I hop too much into that, I'm going to say hello to a couple of people that I got on the live stream. I said, I already had said hi to my mom. My sister cousin is on here today. What's up, Simone? Grandma Liberta is fantastic seeing you today. I appreciate y'all. And if you're watching this live, if you're watching in the playback, if you've seen me before, I want you to go ahead and, and, and give me a heart in the comments or give me some prayer hands in the comments and if you haven't if you if this is your first or even your second time watching moment with Mosketti, just give me a little bit of love drop a smiley face in the comments or drop me a wave in the comments i appreciate y'all for being here and participating i just want to see you know are we growing or is this my same people showing up because you know if the if i if i got the same ogs i got the same ogs and i ain't got no problem with that but if we got some new faces in the place then i always appreciate being able to acknowledge that y'all are here same thing for y'all tiktok all right so i got i i'm gonna bring to y'all three steps Three steps which you can take in order to start going along your healing journey. Three steps, three steps. I, I always like me a three-point preacher. And so I think I'm a, I'm a three-step teacher because any more than that, then I'm talking too long. Amen. <laughs> All right. So if you're going along your healing journey, you don't know where to start, you know, don't know what to do. Um, the first thing that you need to do First thing that you need to do is straight up and down, straight out, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Now, that seems to be like, okay, of course I need to be honest with myself. I'm, 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 I'm me. I know what I got going on. But a lot of times... You know, when we're facing difficult things, when we've seen a lot of trauma, when we've gone through through different things in life, we 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 look at ourselves in a lens of self-protection. And it's not that lens of self-protection is not always a lens of self-reflection. And so we 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 justify things or we downplay things or we upplay things in order to make ourselves feel better, in order to throw a spin on whatever happened, in order to give ourselves some comfort. 
But when we're going through a healing season, it is not time for comfort. It is absolutely time to be uncomfortable. And it is uncomfortable to have to face your truth sometimes. Um, I know I got my mom on here. If you've been on a moment with Mosquetti before, you already know I talk about her being in a 12-step program. And one of the first things that they make you do is admit that you are an addict. Mom says reality. Absolutely. You have to face the reality of your situation. If you do not face the reality of your situation, the good, the bad, and the ugly of your situation, there is no way that you're going to be able to change it. There is no way that you're going to be able to heal from something that you don't even acknowledge is a problem. Where you don't even acknowledge that it is that you're coming in conflict with yourself and with other people. If you can't be honest with yourself, baby, who can you be honest with? And when I say be honest with yourself, I'm talking about in those moments when you are all alone by yourself. There is nobody around. There's nobody uh, to, to gas you up. There's nobody to bring you down. It's just a, you and the man starting with the man in the mirror. You got to be honest with yourself and what you have going on. And that way you'll, you'll be able to truly see yourself, the glory and the grotesque. And you'll be able to pick apart what you have going on. The second step, and and you know, if you if you if you know me, I'm a hallelujah Jesus level. Um, but I respect everybody in, in in their relationship with God, however their relationship with God occurs. The second step is that you need to be honest with God. People run a people run into issues and they run away from church they run away from family they run away from self but you cannot run away from God he sees all is all and knows all and so when we try to hide our faults or when we try to turn away from God or when we try to tell ourselves oh I can't talk to God or I can't uh, get engaged with church or I can't pray because I'm too dirty Darling, God already sees and knows what you got going on. He's just waiting for you to step up to the plate and acknowledge it. And when you can be honest with yourself, when you are in the deepest, darkest, loneliest places in your life, God can reach you there. And if you can be honest with God, honest with your higher power, honest with the source of all things about what you have happening in your life, you can start your relationship. You can do your relationship building. You can have your conversations and you can ask for your deliverance from that perspective. But if you go to God, if you if you start your prayer life, you know you you know you really need to talk to God and you start with all that sugar coating. Father God, holy is the highest of heavens. The omnipotent one. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. Yeah, he all that. He know he all that. He know he all that. Put all that down. Sometimes you got to be like, God, uh, hey, it's me. What's up? <laughs> um, I'm dirty and I need you to clean me up. I need you to clean me up. I need you to clean me up. God knows your heart and he knows your circumstances, but sometimes he's waiting for you to step to the plate and, 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 and say it yourself. I need your help out of this situation. I need your help to give me comfort in this area of which I am uncomfortable. I need your help to show me the next step I'm supposed to take because I'm absolutely lost. I need your help to, to, to access the type of help that I need. God is there for your ugly and for your pretty. He's there for the, the down and the nitty gritty. He just wants you to be real about it. He wants you to be real about it. You know, a lot of times people leave the church because they, they sense a whole lot of fakeness in there because it do be. It do be. It do be. People get dressed up. They put their hair on. They put their makeup on. They put their suits and neckties on. They put the high heels on. And they walk in there as if they have no troubles. As if everything, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah, I'm blessed and highly favored, and I'm distressed and highly troubled at the same time. You can be all of that at once. You can be all of that at once. But if you got, want God to help you, if you want some guidance, if you want some deliverance through that thing that you're dealing with, 
then you got to be honest with God about what your troubles are. And that starts with being honest with yourself. And then you move to being honest with God so that he can give you the guidance and the deliverance that you are seeking. And then the third step is time to move on to being honest with others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in some of this healing process, God is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to make you have to go talk to some folk. Mm-hmm. And in those conversations with those folk that you got to go talk to, um, sometimes you're going to have to go talk to people and get some clarity about what they did to you. Sometimes you're going to have to go to some folks and ask them to take accountability for the things that have occurred between the two of you. And sometimes you're going to have to, uh, sometimes in your healing journey, you're going to have to go on and talk to folk and ask them to forgive you. That's part of what being honest with yourself is. If you can acknowledge where you were at fault along your journey, because sometimes hurt people hurt people. We know that. Sometimes in order to heal from some of the damage that has been done in your life, you have to ask for forgiveness for the damage that you've done so that you can move on, so that you can grow, so that you can be liberated. And that's only going to happen if you're honest with the other people. That's only going to start off if you're honest with yourself and move on to getting that guidance from God and move on to connecting with the people, places, and things that you're supposed to access in order to have assistance along your healing journey. That's right. My mom said you play a part in every situation. You play a part in every situation that took place. And yeah, sometimes you really were the victim and sometimes you really didn't, you really didn't have very much control over the scenario, but you were very present. And so you have to decline those. And so you have to be honest with other people. If you're along your healing journey, it takes you to a therapist's office or to a healer or some type of priest or some type of preacher or some some sort of service in which you are sitting down and talking to somebody about what you have going on. You need to be honest in that space. You need to be honest in that space. Those spaces have confidentiality for a reason. The first thing that we tell you is, is, is that everything we speak about in those types of spaces are confidential. And the reason behind that is so that you can be open with your most honest and vulnerable self. So that the real healing can occur. When you hold back, you've created a barrier between yourself and your healing. When you refuse to acknowledge and be honest with other people, you create a, a barrier between yourself and your healing. When you refuse to look at yourself in the mirror, when you refuse to talk to your higher power, when you refuse to forgive and be forgiven, or if you refuse to, to even acknowledge that you're not in a place to forgive. Because that requires honesty too. Then you create barricades in your healing. And yes, yeah, sometimes we're not ready to heal certain areas of our lives. Sometimes you're not ready to heal certain areas of your life because like we talked about last time, sometimes that, that hurt and that pain is connected to other pieces of hurt and pain. And sometimes you have to heal one area of hurt and pain before you can move on to the next area of hurt and pain. You got to be honest about whether or not you're ready for that. And if you're ready for it, then move full steam ahead. And if you're not, then you can take a moment to acknowledge that. Be okay with that. Pray on that. Be patient on that. Meditate on that. Ask for deliverance in that area. And when it's time for you to get there, when the fullness of time has arrived, you will get there. I keep looking off to the side because I really appreciate my TikTok family for coming in and, and, and joining us. And if any of you uh, do not currently follow me and you would like to follow me, um, go ahead and, and follow me now. I would love to get more followers because I'm going to do this every week, usually at 3.30. But this week we're at 2.30 for Respect for Time and Father's Day. And we're talking about healing and growth. Feel free also to find me Mosketti on Facebook and Mosketti on YouTube. If you're looking for the playback, this whole thing will be on my YouTube channel, Most Getty. So honesty is the best policy. But honesty is ugly. And honesty is uncomfortable. Because honesty requires vulnerability. 
And when you're vulnerable, you're susceptible to being hurt and harmed. You're exposed. I had a friend tell me lately, recently, um, I was going through some things and some, some things that I thought had already healed up resurfaced themselves. Now, I had healed some areas of that hurt, but it was much more intricate and much more deeply rooted in me than I knew. And it was all over me. It was all over me. I, I was, I, I went out and that friend came up to me and was like, you, Mo, you look like you are trying to hide. And I was like, I am. <laughs> I am. I was like, I, I was in public, but I was trying to hide all at the same time because I was dealing with something. I was going through something. I thoughts were resurfacing about things and things that happened in my childhood, in my teenage years, in my younger 20 years that made me very uncomfortable and I was ready to talk about it but I wasn't all at the same time and that friend told me once you once you deal with the heavy once you deal with that thing that's vexing you so tough everything else ain't so heavy no more Boy, when I tell you I started crying, I was like, you're not going to sit here and make me cry in public. Oh, my God. But it was the truth. It was absolutely the truth. Um, and I'm, tr I'm trying to get more comfortable with speaking my truth. And it really is, is, is tied to the, the way that I grew up. Um, you know, I know some people might see the, the beautiful, lovely pictures of me and my family and stuff now because we've gone through an incredibly uncomfortable but incredibly profound healing journey. Um, but there was a lot of issues in my childhood. There was violence in my childhood. There was abuse in my childhood. There was neglect in my childhood. There was a lot that I didn't have and a lot that did happen to me growing up. And some of it spanned a long period of time. And I didn't realize how deeply rooted it was in me until I started unpacking all of that healing. And my friend was right. Once I started speaking up about what happened to me and the things that occurred in my life, everything else that seemed heavy just wasn't so heavy no more. A lot of my anxiety has lifted around other things because I'm like, well, look, so it's, a, it's a group of people who know a whole lot about me now. <laughs> That I didn't, ex and I, things that I thought I was going to take to my grave or only tell to my best friends had only told to my best friends. And I barely thought I was going to do that. But I had to be honest with myself. I had to be honest with the fact that I was still hurting. I had to be honest with God and, and be like, I don't, I'm uncomfortable right now. And I don't want to talk about the thing, the, the, the abuses that had happened in my household. I don't want nobody shaming my mama. I don't want nobody coming for my daddy. I don't want nobody questioning my decisions. But I also had to be honest with the fact that the only reason why I don't speak about what happened is because I'm scared of the boogeyman. I'm actually not scared of anything at all. I'm just very uncomfortable. It just leaves me very vulnerable. It just leaves me very exposed. So I started to tell in a story that I said, in all honesty, has a happy ending. I'm fantastic. Look at me. I'm cute. I told, I told, I told Tone, who's producing this show, that this camera got my skin looking good. But really, my skin is looking good because I'm happy and I'm drinking my water and I'm taking care of myself and the camera is just picking up on that. Aha! But that's what healing does. You be honest with yourself. You be honest with God. Tell them when you're terrified. Tell them when you don't want to do it. Tell them that you need comfort. Tell them that you need help. Because I tell you, I, I, I was saying I am uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. I want to do this, but I don't want to do this. And God sent me. God has sent me on more than one occasion a person to meet me in a place where I stepped out on a limb and said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to step into my healing. I'm going to be bold. And I don't even know if I have all the tools that I need in order to complete this task, but I'm going to do it anyways because God, you're calling me to do it. 
God, you're calling me to do it, and I'm going to do it. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to, but I know it's part of my healing process. I have to face it. And God has met me on the battlefield with somebody that has been able to uplift me, to pray for me, to comfort me. It's been people who I didn't even know six months ago. It's been people I didn't even know four months ago. But that have come to my aid for my healing process, to give me comfort, to give me support, to give me love, to give me courage, to speak life into me. Why? Because I was bold enough to be honest with myself about where I, what I needed in my healing. I was bold enough to ask God for help and step out on faith. And I was courageous enough to be honest with the people who he sent me so that they can help me hold, help hold my hand and take me across the line of various areas of healing. When I get on this mic and I tell y'all to do y'all work, I'm not telling y'all to do nothing that I'm not willing to do myself. And you know what? God has, God has definitely tested my gangster on that one. <laughs> Ooh, oh, ah. But that's a policy of mine. I'm not finna. I'm not going to sit around and not do my healing and then tell you to do your healing while all I have to do is talk loud in front of a microphone and create a lesson that is hypothetical. No, this is a real deal. This is tried, tested, and true per me. And when I got to be honest with myself and when I got to be honest with God and when I got to be honest with others, I have breakthroughs. I've sat down with both of my parents, looked them dead in the eye and said, you already know what's up. You already know I'm hurt. Now, the beautiful part for me is that my parents are wonderful people and they love me and just took accountability for all of the good, bad and ugly that happened throughout my childhood. There was no blaming. There was just love. And I know that I'm blessed in that regard because other people have tried to connect with their parents and seek healing and their parents have been very defensive and very dismissive and have gaslit them to act like that to to make them to try to make it seem like the things that they the childhood trauma that they experienced didn't exist I'm very blessed in the regard that my parents straight up and down took accountability because nobody is perfect and my parents were young parents and so they were doing a lot of growing up themselves. They were doing a lot of destruction that they didn't even know how to learn to heal from. So here I am, not that many years younger than them, going on my healing journey. And they were with me. And I'm appreciative of that. And I'm blessed for that. And I actually, I asked God for that. Please don't let this blow up in my face <laughs> when I try to tell these people why I'm mad. And it's been a beautiful experience. And I, I know I'm blessed in that regard. And I know everybody, everybody doesn't have that experience. But it's healing regardless of whether or not you have that experience with your parents or your loved ones or the people around you. It is absolutely worth taking those, those steps. Because once you are liberated, once you speak on the things that are holding you down, they no longer hold the power. The people who have told you to be quiet and keep keep things to your chest, they no longer have their power when you when you shine light on it. The darkness does not have power in light. All right. Let me take another drink of water. Ooh, what we got? Mama said we got our master's degree. I sure did. But honestly, I talk about having my master's degree as one of, as pretty as like I always reference that as this great accomplishment. But at the end of the day, like just the fact that I'm a sane person, the fact that I am a loving person, the fact that all I want to do is spread joy is really my crowning achievement. Because I can get as many degrees as I want to, but if I'm a trash person, I'm a trash person. And I don't desire to be. I desire to be great. I desire to be good. And I desire to give love. And that's really the result of my healing work. The degrees, yeah, that's that's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears right there. I'm never going to downplay that. Money, too. A lot of money, too. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, being an upstanding, quality person, that's my crowning achievement. Being a God-fearing person, that's my crowning achievement. Wanting to help other people do better, that's my crowning achievement. Helping people do better, that's my crowning achievement. 
because I spread love through this world, just and despite and because of the the chaos and destruction of the damage that people tried to put on me. I can't. I'm alchemizing that into something greater. I will not let that perpetuate. Now you try to destroy me. I'm a. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm gonna pop out the other end with something good. Cause I'm gonna learn my lessons and I'm gonna just get greater later. All right. What's I'm going on? All right. Let's keep going. So. So you're going through your steps. You're honest with yourself. You're honest with God. You're honest with others. That, those are those those are the three steps I'm laying out for today as far as how to go about your healing journey. So how do you know that you are healed though? Because a lot of times, like I said, like I said before, you know, time doesn't heal all. It's the things that happen over the course of time that heals. So how do you know that you've actually healed? Or how do you know that you haven't healed? Sometimes we allow time and distance between a thing to make us feel like we have healed, but we haven't actually healed. We've just been away from the trigger long enough for it to not really affect us. But if but if presented with something in that area, again, we will we'll fall, we'll buckle, we'll be triggered, we'll cry, we'll have a panic attack, we'll freak out, we'll be affected for the rest of the day. So the the first the first way to know that you have healed is can you face it? Can you face it? Like, can you, can, can you, can you bring up the subject of what you, what harmed you? Can you be around the person who harmed you? Not do you want to, you ain't got to, but can you, can you speak their name? Or are you enraged every time you think about it? Are you thrown off just by somebody who looks like them? Are you nervous every time you drive by a certain space, every time you interact with a certain substance? If you're still so disturbed that you cannot face your trigger or something like it, then you're not healed, darling. And that's nothing wrong with that. That just goes back to being honest with yourself. Like in the 12-step program, if you are struggling with a substance, if you've been delivered from it you can go around it and not use it but if you still want to use it every time you around it you're not delivered from that you're not healed from that and there's nothing wrong with that but being honest with yourself allows you to be honest with the fact that you're an alcoholic you can't go to the bar you can't you smoke too much you do so many drugs you can't go around them people you can't go over their house you're not there on your healing journey yet you're not fortified enough you need some more prayer on that. You need some more healing on that. You need to dig deeper on that before you're able to even face that. Some people can't even look at a beer commercial without wanting to go have a beer. You got to be honest about that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That just means that's where you are on your healing journey. And you got to work on that before you can actually face that person, that place, that thing that you're trying to heal from. I had an example here about healing your skin. You ever get a cut, you ever get a scrape, you ever get a scab, well, a cut or a scrape, a wound, a burn. When it happens, it hurts. You have been injured. This is what happens to us emotionally. As it heals, it scabs over. It becomes itchy, it becomes hard. It's still uncomfortable because it's still in the healing process. But once it fully heals, you can touch that spot. I got where, where I got a scar. I know I got a scar somewhere. I got a scar right here. I could touch it. I could touch it all day long. It's skin now. It's completely healed over. Once upon a time ago, that was an open cut. It's like this long. Once upon a time ago, that was an open cut. And if I kept uncovering it and I kept picking at it, it's going to get infected. It's going to get worse. But if I cater to it if I give it time if I'm honest about the fact that this look ugly maybe I gotta go to the, the doctor get some stitches or maybe I just need some neosporin and I can see guidance about it and I can get it taken care of eventually the things that I have done to remedy it over time will allow it to close up heal and now I can scratch this spot as much as I want to and unless I create a new scratch right here 
I'm all right because it's fully healed. I can face this scar. It's still a scar. I've had this since I was about 15, 14, 15, something like that. 15, 16. I remember how I got it. I was being stupid. I was taking something out to the trash that had nails in it. And I did something stupid and I scratched myself. I was pretty deep. But I could touch it now. Because that's completely healed over. I could face that now. Because it's completely healed over. There's some stuff that don't happen to me. Like, I don't even care about it no more. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That was traumatic. <laughs> But I got into a car accident once. And for the longest, I was nervous driving by that spot. And now, like, when I go over there, I just be over there. Because I'm not as bothered by it as I was. Because a healing process has taken place. If I still don't even want to drive down that block, and ooh, that's where I got in that accident. I'm not healed. And that's okay. That just means I need more time. I need more honesty. I need more steps. I need more connection. I need more deliverance. I need more space. I need more breathing. I need more release. Maybe I got that trauma trapped in my, my body, but that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother day. I ain't got enough time to talk about how trauma gets trapped in the body. I don't. I got to get out of here eventually. I'll be out. Mm -mm -mm. Let me stop myself now. Step number two to know how if you're healed, can you trace it? Number one, can you face it? Number two, can you trace it? Can you like unpack it? Can you look into why this thing hurt you? Can you look into how this thing may have affected other areas in your life? Because once you can face it, then you can dive a little bit deeper and see really how far it has affected you. Especially if it's a childhood trauma that you're talking about. You, if you're healed, you you if you are healed or at least healed enough, you will be able to face that thing and then trace the ways that it may be affecting you in other areas of your life. And I say childhood trauma specifically because as we are developing through life, the part uh, the process of developing through life is learning how the world works. And when things happen to you, good, bad, and ugly, you formulate in your brain this is how the world works, and so you operate on what has been presented to you this is how the world works and so when something traumatic has happened to you you still learn that this is how the world works and you incorporate that information in the ways that you act other ways in life so when you're able to face that trauma you're able to trace it through how it works in er different areas of your life And you're able to heal the things that it's connected to. Or you're able to dismantle it or you're able to work with it. And the last way or the third way that I'm going to present today is how to know that your heal is healed is. It was number one, can you face it? Number two, can you trace it? And number three, can you spread it? Can you spread it? Can you spread it? can you spread it so this healing journey it's not just for you you didn't go through that just for you you've gone through it because well you went through it number one because this world is corrupt and when corruption exists corruption spreads its dirt all over everything around it because it wants everything in its vicinity to be corrupted that's why the thing happened to you so now that you are healed from it now that you're delivered from it now you have a testimony and not only do you have a testimony but you have skills especially if you were able to trace how you got your healing and how it affected other places. You have different skills now, but can you share it? If you're truly healed, you'll be able to share that information with other people as you see them on their healing journey, as they're dealing with things that are similar to what you're dealing with and help guide them along. It'll make their lives easier and it'll make your life more fulfilling. Because if you can save somebody else from something that you've gone through or comfort somebody as they're going through what you go through, you're in a beautiful space of healing. Not only are you healed, but you're now you are a healer. Now you are a more, even more of an asset to your community than you already were because you can spread light. You can spread levity. You can spread joy. You can pull people from their darkness into the light with your experience. You can show them the way out of that valley. 
So can you face it? And can you trace it? And can you spread it? If you can't face it, if you can't dig in it, and if you can't share, then those are indicators that maybe you are still, still healing. And healing, depending on what happened, how long it happened, how detrimental it was to you when it happened, your healing process might take a long time. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to shame anybody who is still healing. I just want you to actually, I just want to encourage you to actually do it. I want you to be honest if you're not ready for it. And I need you to be honest if you are. Because if you are, it's time to get at it. Don't let that thing hold you back. Don't let that thing hold you down. You deserve liberation. You deserve light. You deserve freedom. And you deserve to have a life where that corruption that tried to corrupt you falls right on off, washes right on away. You deserve that. Because it was never meant for you to have it on you in the first place. And everybody deserves a little piece of that piece. So if you can share it, that's your ministry. That's your leadership. That's your contribution to society. Everybody always think their contribution to society we should, should be some big dollars or some big, some, some big community organization. No, sometimes your contribution to society is just that you healed and you help others heal. Or you've helped one other heal. Or you've helped somebody on one small part of their healing journey because they you had something that they needed. But when you don't share what you experience, when you don't share how you garnered your strength, you can't give people hope. I just stole that from you, mom. You said spread your experience, strength, and hope. When people see that you have come through what they are going through, they get hope. They get hope. They get hope because they they can see, oh, there's an other side to this. See, sometimes when you're walking through that valley of the shadow of death, one of the ways that you fear no evil is you know that evil is limited. You know that there's hope on the other end of that valley. And when there's somebody on the other end saying, come on, you can do it, you can make it, let's go. Being your cheerleader and showing you that they made it through, it can galvanize you to make it to the end. And it can encourage you to actually keep pushing forward to know that it is possible to heal. It is possible to get through that. I'm not alone in that thing that made me feel so isolated and small. So spread it. Share it. Because I tell you, look, I, I say this all the time that the, 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 the first trick of the enemy was division. To make you feel alone and make you feel shame. That's back in Genesis. The fall of man wasn't even, I mean, it was about eating the fruit and being disobedient, but it was a tactic to separate us from God and separate us from each other. Because when we're separated from God and we're separated from each other, all we have is ourselves and man was never meant to be alone. It was not good for man to be alone before the fall before corruption happened we're not supposed to be alone we're supposed to be communal we're supposed to be together we're supposed to be a village but our traumas our division our defensiveness when things happen to us it keeps us lonely it keeps us isolated but the healing and the coming together and the being each other's cheerleaders and the sharing of resources it binds us back together it raises us higher and it makes us less susceptible to the traumas that may occur to us later. So I'm encouraging you to get on your healing, man. Do to do. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God and the guidance that you need and be honest with the people who are in your circles who you either need to forgive or ask forgiveness from and be honest if you ain't ready for none of that be honest with your healers be honest with your therapists be honest with your doctors be honest with your family 
and work your way through. And when you work your way through, spread that love, spread that knowledge throughout your community. So not only that people can make their way through, but they can avoid going to those areas, those dark areas in the first place. See, that's one of the problems that we have. Why, why we, why there's a disconnect between older and younger generations is that people want to share the like that final step of oh, just don't go over there, don't do that, in a real legalistic way. But they're not really showing you like why these things should are could be detrimental to you. And so now people just feel like you just create laws out of nothing or rules out of nothing. Like no, there was a path, in which this may have been learned the hard way that we shouldn't be engaging in certain stuff or why you should avoid certain spaces or why certain substances, certain places, certain places, certain things, certain interactions are detrimental to you because they can cause a trauma. But no, like when people are just told, no, don't do that. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't, there's no understanding in that. There's no hope. There's no relationship in that. So it just becomes, people become tyrants when they should be given testimonies. Your testimony is where your ministry is, not your rules. So anywho. My phone is dying. <laughs> and my lesson is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pray it out. And we're gonna get on out of the studio. Get on out of the studio. I thank you all for being with me. So let's go and take it up to God. Dear Father God, I thank you on this day. I thank you for the opportunity to get in front of this mic and connect with your people and to connect with your, myself and to share my story and to share a path of hope, liberation, and healing. I pray that every voice. Every person that is under the sound of my voice, whether they be in the live or they be uh, watching the replay is blessed by this message, that their heart is open to receive it and that their mind is open to seek you and seek the healing that they need in order to be a better person for themselves and a better person for the people around them and a better person for the kingdom and a better person for their village and a better person for this lifetime. I ask that you be with me and you be with us all as we go through this week. May no hurt, harm, and danger reach, a, reach us. May we all find things, peace, and love in our respective homes. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. All right, now. So I appreciate y'all spending a moment with me. I appreciate y'all spending a moment with, with me on the uh, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the TikTok. Um, if you would like to give me a piece of little financial appreciation for my time and my effort here, you can go ahead and hit my cash tag, cash app, cash tag Mosketti. Buy me a coffee, buy me a car, whatever is in your wallet and whatever is on your heart. I greatly appreciate that. Um, but overall, I just hope that you take the message, like, comment, share, spread it. For those of you who are on TikTok, you can follow me Mosketti on Facebook, or you can follow me Mosketti on YouTube to watch the entire replay. Um, and with that being said, I thank you for spending a moment with me. Peace. <laughs>